Taylor Swift is in the clear. Just minutes ago, the judge in her two-way civil trial in Denver threw out a former DJ's case against Swift for ruining his career. Her charge that the DJ groped her, that will go forward. U.S. District Judge William Martinez says the DJ never proved during this trial that Swift was the one who got him fired from KYGO Radio. So the jury is going to come back on Monday to consider Swift's claim in the civil suit that David Mueller groped her as they were taking a photo together during a meet and greet in 2013. She is asking for just a dollar in damages. Her civil suit was a counterclaim after the DJ took her to court. Senator Cory Gardner has dismissed calls by journalists and angry voters for months, upset that he won't play ball with a, a town hall. Well, now he's scheduled a triple header, back to back to back town halls next Tuesday. Just a week ago, he was dismissing calls for town halls. If you guys think that the town halls are the only way that we can com communicate with constituents, I'm sorry. There's more ways to reach out and hear the constituent opinions than uh, the press-driven town hall. That was down in Durango, where Gardner got some heat for a four-way town hall with the governor, Senator Bennett, and Congressman Tipton. It was announced with a day's notice. His triple town hall Tuesday features three events, all during working hours. Colorado Springs at 7.30 a.m., Greeley at noon, Lakewood at 3.30. Gardner's team says they'll be open to the public. We checked. Each of the venues has the ability to seat hundreds, so get your popcorn ready. You will find scheduling details in this article on 9news.com. Age 16. You're making some pretty big decisions. You're getting your driver's license, starting to think about college. A state representative thinks you ought to be able to vote as well. At the very least, he told our Steve Stager, 16-year-old should have a say in who runs their schools. What teen hasn't wished they had a little more control over their school? We don't have a, a voice in the financials of how the budget is going to be distributed. And we don't have a voice in the overall structure of our schools and programs. Yasmin and Muhammad is 16, and she already has a pretty political mind. I mean, come on, she met us at the state yeah. capitol. But she really has nowhere to express that political mind. I want youth my age to have a voice in their community, and I think the most impactful voice would be on our school boards. Democratic State Representative Jonathan Singer wants to give kids like Yasmin a chance to use that voice. Allows our school districts to decide whether or not 16 or 17 year olds can have access to our democracy by voting in their own local school board elections. He plans on bringing a bill this next session that would give districts that power. The rule would only allow them to vote in school board races, an idea that, as you can imagine, brings out the naysayers. In my extremely unscientific Twitter poll of almost 200 this afternoon, people didn't really like the idea. They're concerned that kids aren't um, well informed enough that they, you know, aren't, uh, they, they're going to be too impressionable. The way that people don't even show up for elections in the state of Colorado at these local races shows to me that these kids are paying more attention than the adults already are. The debate is already beginning, though the session is still a few months away. Singer believes he'll be able to change minds. Bad habits start at a young age, good habits can start at a young age too. For next, I'm Steve Steger. More than 31,000 teenagers are pre-registered to vote across Colorado. Most of them, about 18,000 of the 31,000, they're unaffiliated. But you can win a bet with your friends by asking whether more teenagers are pre-registered Democrat or Republican. It's Republican by about 500 pre-voters. Colorado is losing two of its very best political reporters as they both head for jobs related to the cannabis industry. Kristen Wyatt of the Associated Press, one of the smartest, funniest voices on Twitter these days, is joining the marijuana business daily. And Peter Marcus, classmate of mine at Ithaca College, go Bombers, now with Colorado Politics. He's headed for a communications job with the marijuana company Terrapin. We mention this because their exceptional journalism led to a number of conversations here on Next. Their work is going to be missed by all of us who want government to be smarter and more accountable. Detours are the worst. I mean, it's the world's way of scrambling your day. And our Marshal Zellinger found a single railroad crossing where just one train car causes an extreme detour, 10 times the original distance you needed to go. So he uh, head over to the railroad track. Can you hear that at home? Yes, if the wind is blowing in the, the direction to carry the sound, to my home, uh, we can hear that at home, yes. This is not a story about train noise, but you're going to hear it almost the entire time. This is our normal way of traveling uh, 
to get to the doctor's office or to a grocery store. As you can see, the trossade is blocked here. This is Jim Conlon's most convenient route from his rural LaSalle home to Highway 85. LaSalle is just south of Greeley on Highway 85, and the railroad crossing is here. It's been blocked way more than it's been ever o been opened. Well, sometimes it's not just blocked by two trains like we're seeing here. This photo from last month shows the absurd. Sometimes it's just one car blocking it. Wait, so all they'd have to do is move it one extra car sometimes. That's correct. This is our backup route right here. Technically, the backup isn't supposed to be the backup. A path that's been used for decades now has a private crossing, no trespassing sign. Everybody comes up here and stops and sees the sign. And if there's no cars on the track, they cross and use it when the other crossing is not available. When both these crossings are blocked, the main detour takes Jim 10 times as far. We have a doctor's visit. Uh, we drive one, two, not quite three miles when we live within a couple hundred yards of this crossing. Three miles was five minutes on that drive. What the statement didn't address from Union Pacific uh, that they gave me, they were very apologetic about this, but I asked twice, why you just can't move the railroad crossing train car one train? They didn't have an answer for me. I will say this, mm -hmm. we called Union Pacific for the first time three weeks ago, and yesterday was the first day that crossing was blocked since my phone call. Curious. What an astonishing mm -hmm. coincidence. Mm -hmm. How about that? They thought we All went right. away. Yeah, you need something done, you call this man over here, Marshall Zellinger. Thank you, sir. A not-so-welcoming sign to Colorado has been circulating online this week. Articles claiming that somebody hacked an eastbound I-70 sign, and it now reads, Welcome to Colorado. Please turn around and go back to your states. Our Verify team investigated whether this is real and found it's not. A CDOT tends to hear pretty quickly if somebody hacks a road sign, and they certainly had not heard of this one. And here's why. It appears to be the work of a free app called Photophonia. It's where you can insert your own message on a road sign, any, any message. And the image itself we trace back to a stock photo of a highway in Spain. Now, whether Colorado is overpopulated or not, that's another debate. But we can verify that sign is fake. Our next question comes from a viewer named Lori. I haven't upped my house insurance since I bought my home. Now that the housing market's exploding, should I be getting more home insurance just because the property value is going up? How often should I check on that? The Rocky Mountain Insurance Information Association says that every homeowner should be checking with their insurance company once a year. See if you need any updates, especially though if you have a remodel, an addition, any kind of improvement to the place. They wanted us to know, and this is important, your insurance is not based on the market value of a home. Your insurance is based on the cost to rebuild it in today's dollars. I wave the flag because it's a beautiful thing. And we're going to walk out here on this bridge, and the first thing that's going to happen is the horns are going to go. You asked us to find Denver's flag man the guy who waves an enormous American flag over I-25. Our Cody Broadway caught up with Jeff McNamara, and we shared his story after the Broncos game last night. Jeff's love of country, his hope that we will unify with the flag as a symbol of our shared values. Jeff is a supporter of President Trump with the Make America Great hat and all, but he said in the story he doesn't care who you voted for. He hopes that you see his flag as a reason to feel some patriotism. And let me tell you what happened next. Email after email attacking Jeff for his political beliefs, attacking us for allowing him to share the story behind the flag that so many have seen. Natalie wrote in to say that she was horrified that we put a Trump supporter on TV. She called Jeff a bigot. Jim wrote in to say that allowing a Trump supporter to talk about patriotism on the news was an affront to basic human decency. Are some of Colorado's progressives so used to only seeing and hearing other liberal voices on TV that the very sight and sound of a Trump supporter offering his perspective on a path to unity, be it right or wrong, that that's abhorrent? If anything, we probably ought to include more conservative perspectives around here and elsewhere on the news to better reflect the political balance of our state. This over-the-top response to a guy, his flag, and his opinion, it's convinced me all the more. There is nothing everyone agrees on. So when I said 99.9% .9 last night, I messed up. A correction is coming. Hey, 
I bet you I know what this guy's doing in the woods. It's when he walks out and onto the interstate that we really have a problem. Tonight, a solution. And who doesn't feel like this at the end of a Friday? A Colorado wows him. Next. You know, I know it's hard to believe, but I've gotten a lot of complaints about the weather so far this summer. It's been too hot. It's been too cold. It's been too dry. It's been too rainy. Well, I have bad news. Over the next nine days, we're going to get all those complaints all over again. Cold weather will continue. We've had it thus far it, during the month of August, and so will some of that rain. Showers and thunderstorms continue tonight through southern Colorado, and that line that's making its way through southeastern Wyoming will be pushing into Colorado by 9 o'clock tonight, keeping the rain going till late tonight for our eastern plains. Rain is a part of our forecast through the weekend and into Wednesday, so we'll get complaints about that. Temperatures will also stay below average and then it gets too hot around here and too dry as we've got a lot of sunshine for Thursday and Friday and temperatures by Thursday Kyle back in the 90s. You know what I say to the complainers Becky? No you wouldn't say that you're too sweet you're very nice. <laughs> Thank you Becky. And police scanners speak they often are called vehicle versus animal crashes versus but it's not a fair fight vehicle always wins which is why our Ann Herp shows us what's being done on Vail Pass to keep them separated. Flying by on I-70. Feeling cool. It might look like Erica Garut is part of a road crew. This is like exactly what not to wear on the news. <laughs> Though she knows a lot about the travel patterns of humans. The traffic on I-70 is getting worse and worse. She's more interested in what other mammals are doing. There's a lot of wildlife on just on the side of I-70. Erica is with the Denver Zoo. So we'll set this guy up. And she and the rest of this brightly clad group are setting up camera traps on Vail Pass. Total of 25 cameras. That are capturing candids. We've got some good bear selfies. They are reacting to the camera. Definitely anthropomorphizing it, but you know, the mama elk kind of leaning over and kissing the baby elk. And we've also been lucky enough to capture lynx. They hope these will be used to help make a case to build a wildlife bridge over westbound I-70. And there's really no way for wildlife to get across the road safely. It's like Frogger, real life Frogger. In this area, you've got elk and moose. If you hit those animals going fast, you, it's not gonna end pr pretty for you or, or the animals. We wanna make sure that it both helps the wildlife, but also um, helps with mitigating uh, accidents as well. Three years in, they've got 50,000 pictures. It's probably off camera material, but a man running naked? No, that's not the what kind of wildlife that we're trying to monitor up here. Their focus is on keeping the hopefully clothed people in their cars safe. Along with the wildlife, they're speeding past. For next, this is Ann Herbst. We've told you about a similar project that's seeing some success. A series of overpasses and underpasses on Highway 9 between Silverthorne and Kremlin. Those have reduced animal vehicle collisions there by 90%. A quick correction. Last night, leading into our story with Steve and Dr. Max talking about how having one cat is a gateway drug to having a couple of cats, I dropped an eye-popping statistic saying that Nine News Research found that 99.9% .9 of next viewers have a cat. I obviously misspoke. We are cat friendly, but we're not hoarding cat owners as viewers. 29.9% of next viewers have a cat, according to our research. Perhaps a bit more after last night's story. Back to school, next style. Look how innocent little Stevie Staker seemed. And Denver's pop-up park goes poof. Whether it returns again, next. Denver, Jeffco, Cherry Creek Schools all are back in session next week. Dugco Kids went back this week. We went back in the next office recalling our first days of school and found picture proof that even the sweetest looking children can one day turn out to be snarky smart Alex running a TV show poorly. Look at Steve Steger, like a little angel as he heads off to school. So sweet. Stevie is what they called him. We still do. Marshall Zellinger with the tiger lurking behind him. Now he's the one who creeps up randomly to question politicians and business leaders. And then yours truly never did find a mirror that wasn't worth my time. Here shaving off my peach fuzz because, you know, even in kindergarten, you never know who you might meet. I admire the courage of adults 
who go back to school. There's a small school getting big help with that particular effort. Our Nelson Garcia explains. Here in California. So we readjusted the entire um, work plan. And the Community College of Denver is up to something behind closed doors. As we look at how many students are currently enrolled. Elizabeth Schroeder is the director of the Foundational Skills Institute, helping people find their way back to school and into a career. A lot of the students who come into the program have so many things that they're, they're working with. To be able to stick it on there. Students like Gary Welsh. I came here as, you know, just to uh, start over, basically. And Linda Villanueva. I am studying business administration. I want to help homeless veterans. <laughs> well, she's learning to weld so he can transform old shipping containers. Buying them up and making homes out of them. Basically cut them, cut them apart and just make homes for uh, uh, homeless veterans. They say you're as young as you feel. Thank God, because now that I'm here, I feel a lot younger. Villanueva wants to set a good example for her grandkids. I'm actually one of the first in my family to come to college. And then we were blessed with a big grant that was written through the Community College of Aurora. Partnering with CCA, the Community College of Denver has received around $1.4 million in state and federal grants to help more students like Villanueva and Welch. With the end outcome not just being their high school equivalency, but also their career as well as family stability. They're up to something around here. We're really looking at having about 90 students per year on average. They're up to helping more non-traditional students than ever before. That's a lot to put on us. For next, I'm Nelson Garcia. Denver's pop-up park is fading back into the streetscape. Traffic will soon return to 21st between Lawrence and Larimer. The experimental park in the ballpark neighborhood was created to exist only from June 15th to August 20th. It's a test. You replace all the cars and buses with food trucks, silent discos, parties. City's been collecting data on the people and pets using the park, seeing which events drew the biggest crowds, when the park was most used. They'll spend a couple months looking at the numbers and then make a decision on whether to make the park permanent. Any public space, any public space that is dominated by one specific group of people um, has a chance to kind of deter other people away, whether it's, you know, the, a transient population or just, um, you know, college-age bros. You know, if it's just a space down in that one group, other groups feel uncomfortable. So that was our aim all along, is to make a space that's welcome and, you know, comfortable for everyone. That guy from the city just said bros. They're going to experiment with more pop-up projects, bike lanes, dog parks. Whether you love them or hate them, Drive around them, curse them. Be sure to be heard when the city collects its feedback. Your Good News has been streaming in all Friday on social media. We've put together the best of it and your feedback next. We always finish with Your Good News. Rhiannon's son, she says, is making progress with his heart problems. Emma Watts' husband was promoted to lieutenant colonel in the Army. And former CU All-American Emma Coburn, a world champ, the 3,000-meter steeplechase this afternoon, witnessed the pure joy from her sister, Gracie. They're going to go wide and she's going to take the inside. Yes! Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Here comes Emma we practiced this! Yeah. We practiced this! Yeah. That's good stuff. So some feedback now on our segment about the flag man waving the flag, the Trump supporter. Christy Kilgore says, Kyle, thanks for being a voice I can count on. I don't know what your views are, but I know you respect mine. Lux writes, conservative media next, hashtag alt-right, hashtag Nazi. How do I say this, Lux? Go away. See the rest of you next time.